<laughs> Awkward. <laughs> So one thing that I want to emphasize is the importance of not only just educating members about issues or topics, but the actual act of speaking about, communicating. Um, if you will look in my external, I wrote, I co-authored a national winning resolution, increasing awareness of the impact of effective preceptorship on nursing students. Basically, this is an issue that's very experienced by a lot of individuals, a lot of nursing students, yet no one talks about it, and when I had to present at Pomona at State Convention, a lot of people were asking why it was the importance of the resolution. The fact that no one's talking about it means it's not impacting anything. So in regards to cohesion and adherence to the Kachikuna clubs, not only with the off-going board, but also the influence board, it's a matter of communicating with them that actually, sitting down with them, asking them, what do you understand the Kachikuna clubs to be? And if there are any other interpretations or any other ways that different various oncoming and upcoming board members feel and understand the cost to be. It is my job as vice chair to be that source to make sure that everyone's on the same page, whether it's through a transition with the old board or educating not just the GVMers, I must emphasize that the ongoing board and the incoming board are all members of that. You know, when it comes to educating the members of this organization about the Catechism Clause and what our namesake strove for, it's, we shouldn't separate executive board from the membership. You know, we should remember that even though we are at a higher position in terms of what we're able to do, logistically and professionally, at the end of the day, we're just members of the position. So, in regards to cohesion, by communicating with the Catechism Clause states, and by educating our members, those with positions and those without positions, about the history of an investment of policy owners, drive and mission to help every Filipino, both Philippines and the diaspora, as it applies to us as Filipinos and Americans. I think the important thing is not stop talking about it. The moment we stop talking about it means it can be forgettable. I believe this, this this whole academic year, the only time I've heard about the Katakuna Clause was during a political report. And being a first year at the first constitution review of my time in Samoan when the Katakuna Clause was added in, I was surprised that such an important and heavy clause in our constitution was only brought up once or twice in the year. So, talk about it. So there have been a number of issues within by any board which have a stall or halt his progress. How do you ensure you remain a mediator who is both fair and neutral in order to put the betterment of the organization above any one person? Throughout my time here, I've always thought of myself as someone who really wants to do what's best for the organization. Sometimes, and I'll admit, I like sometimes to put the organizers above myself. I feel that I am one organ system of the entire body of the organization. Everyone playing crucial factors in its functionality and stability and survival as an organization, but also as a social social impact. Regarding, you mentioned So there have been a number of issues with the body board which have stalled or halted progress. Mm. How do you ensure you remain a mediator who is both fair and neutral in order to put the betterment of the organization above any one person? Well, I would expect the members of our executive board to be doing this for a reason, not just to be on an executive board, not just to have the title, but to have a trial. Why are they here? I ran for sports because I knew I had to 
I had the energy and the drive to be out there and be the loudest person in the room. I knew I had that. When I stepped up to take on admin and I stepped up to take on co-treasurer this year at the Bayani board, I knew I had more fire in my heart to go out there and take up the job that no one wanted to do. And not necessarily the job no one wanted to do, but the jobs that we needed to be filled. Duties and tasks that every single executive board member has to understand that they need to get done. But in my opinion, at the end of the day, it's all about sport. I feel that regardless of what dysfunction or situation that and, uh, uh, any executive board, regardless of it, some or another one, in any group setting, members that help organize what happens in the organization are expected. They were elected or appointed to uphold values and positions to keep the organization's mission going. And I feel that regardless of if there's one executive board member, 20 executive board members, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, each person on that executive board is part of a lot. And it's just a matter of informing them and reminding everyone that you're here for this reason. You play this role in our team. What are you going to do? If someone leaves, are you going to step up? Are you going to compensate? Are you going to collaborate? Who's going to be the one to do it? And then that's me. So be it. I'm versatile. I know I can't do it. I know I have to do it. So just to dive in a little bit of that. Imagine the majority of the new executive board disagree with the leadership styles and becoming top four. How do you ensure that the board and top officers come to an agreement or compromise? Yeah. Imagine that the majority of the new executive board disagree with the leadership styles of the incoming top four. How do you ensure that the board and top officers come to an agreement or compromise? Again, communication. I mean, I feel like I've said everything I've been at. Communication is the expectation along with collaboration. If there's an issue regarding the top officers, the executive officers with the other coordinators and liaisons, if appointed, again, it's just communication. How can we expect that change? How can we expect to grow? How can we expect to heal as a board if we don't talk about it, you know? It's very easy to not bring something up. I mean, it's just that. You don't bring it up. And if you bring it up to other people and it doesn't get addressed in the space of an executive board meeting, for example, what do you expect to get done? You can complain, or you can argue, or you can deliberate, oh, the top officers aren't really doing their job. But how would I know if you don't tell me? How would I know if there's not a space to facilitate that deliberation to make it happen? So should I have a situation where I find out that a majority of the line from the executive board disagrees with the leadership styles of the executive officers? <laughs> It is my responsibility in the Constitution to emphasize the morale of the executive board. I am not scared to communicate. I'm not afraid to confront individuals or groups of individuals just to make sure that we, at the end of the day, remember why we're here. You know, this, even if the executive board, I would say, has very opposing sides and leadership and what they believe this order to be in, at the end of the day, our members look to us as the executive board. A board comprised of members who ideally, not ideally, should be following under the same footsteps. Following the same path since we all have the same mission. To be there for our members. To be there as representatives of Lady Saman in our community. And not just being there for them, but being there for each other. Questions. The chairperson and vice chairperson are one of the closest relationships and they can set the tone for the entire executive board. How do you plan to work with and alongside the chairperson, especially in times of stress and conflict? Interview that one please. Of course. The chairperson and vice chairperson are one of the closest relationships and they can set the tone for the entire executive board. How do you plan to work with and alongside the chairperson, especially in times of stress and conflict? I think it should be understood that a lot of the reasoning behind why our hierarchy and the executive office is so chair vice chair is we need a we need a hierarchy. But a lot of people don't remember they don't realize that vice chairperson assumes that role of chairperson. 
if the chairperson is unavailable. Vice chairperson assumes the role of vacancies in the executive board should there be one. The versatility expected out of the vice chairperson complements the leadership and guidance of the chairperson. Chairperson and vice chair are two, is one position divided among two people. One position divided so that every aspect of his organization can be run accordingly and efficiently. Could you please repeat the end part of your question? Okay. Regarding the How do you plan to work with and alongside the chairperson, especially in times of stress and conflict? Hmm. Stress and conflict is just a matter of delegation, communication. Delegation meaning giving the right task to the right people on the right time, on the right circumstances. Communicating pros, cons, ups, downs, strengths, weaknesses. Being transparent with each other, especially not just between chairperson and vice chairperson, but among your board members. I cannot act as a vice chair without knowing how my executive board feels, not knowing how stressed they are, how prepared they are. I can't, I'm not comfortable sending my executive board to perform tasks and committee work for big events such as HSC or FACN or FG if I know that they're not ready. If I know that they're hesitant, they're apprehensive, they're not prepared. With that being said, I will work with my co top officer, top two, chairperson, vice chair, together working with chairperson to facilitate that discussion. Again, discussion and communication is so imperative to making sure that organi or our organization as an executive board functions smoothly. Without chairperson and vice chair knowing what's happening with not only themselves and with each, with each other, but with the other uh, e-board members, how can they expect to handle the stress? How can they expect to handle the dysfunction if we don't talk? Vice chairperson can have all the plans that they want. However, at the end of the day, another one of their crucial roles is fulfilling duties of absent positions. Historically, there are several cases where you may need to assume over two positions at once. How do you plan on upholding your duty to morale while carrying the responsibilities of others? I've been on many teams, many executive boards here at State, back home in Sacramento. And one thing that's common is morale. You know, what is morale? Let's, take, let's, let's analyze that for a second. What is morale? You can have the most prepared team to accomplish the most simple tasks, but if they're not all on the same page, they're not going to do it well. They're not going to operate. They're not going to run the plays. They're not going to do anything right because they're not there. Their headspace is not there. How can you expect someone to do well on an exam if they're already going and thinking they're going to go? You know, I think the battle first begins in the head. If we're not ready to approach a task and do whatever it takes to get that task done, we can't expect to get it done. Regarding vice chairperson and me assuming other positions, I mentioned in my speech, I, I know I am capable and versatile. I've held one coordinate position and appointed position in two top four positions within my tenure and so on. I know how to take a post. I know how to step up and do take and have the initiative to get things done. And regarding, just because I take a role does not mean that's my role. Mind you, it's only, I'm only upholding it because it's vacant. As my chairperson, of course, with the other with vacancies in the executive board, we can't just fill it in and ignore it. No, this is a position that's crucial. Again, another organ system to the body of someone that we need to fulfill, not just to have someone fill in the spot, but to have someone who has the drive and the motivation, and the willingness, and have the vision to make that position their own. If that's me, then that's the case. But I would advocate, I would communicate, which of the other executive board members maybe has an inkling, or like a thought. Maybe they thought about that position, maybe they have what it takes. But again, that goes into the conversation of potential. You know, a lot of these positions, a lot of people don't, they run for positions they, they may feel suits them best, but what if you're, you'll never know if you see the other position you don't try. <clears throat> I've had the privilege and blessing of having so many positions on this, on this executive, on these past two executive boards, Chinese board and Brownie board, that I know what it's like to be everywhere in this board. I know what it's like to be versatile. So when it comes to the question, morale, remind them, 
Why are we here? What's your mission here? Are you as down as I am? That might seem funny to some, but for real though, are you as down as me? I can guarantee you, you're not as down as me. I can guarantee you, you don't have the drive that I do. I've been built in this organization since day one. So if you think that you can question my authority, if you think you can question my drive, you're wrong. So, but, again, a great leader communicates to those around him. I want everyone on the board to feel that they can't be toppled, to feel that they can't be diminished or just ignored. I advise a person who make it my mission to make sure that every single executive board member on next year's board will feel the same confidence, that same impenetrability, that same strength that I do. Uh, a characteristic of myself that I felt and that developed from my predecessors. Just as past keyboard members have given me that confidence, given me that strength, I want to give that to everyone. And not just the executive board member, I go back to my point, to every member. The Constitution states that I'm responsible of boosting the morale of the executive board. Why restrict me to that when I know I can boost the morale of the organization? You know? So, with that being said. Oh, <laughs>